Hi everyone, this is Nikki from the Happily Lost channel. Today I'm going to do a retake of a presentation I gave back in uh, the end of 2019. The presentation was part of a sexology and practice symposium in Australia. I will take, I try to, I will try to keep the presentation shorter than what it was originally. Um, it was a lead in to my research talking about what, where the current research is and what were the outcomes in relation to orgasmic capacity and experience for trans women post-surgery. Um, the presentation will include two people's stories, but I have um, taken all identifying information out for those stories. So let's get on with the presentation. This presentation is about orgasmic experiences of transgender people, particularly of trans women, and the search for orgasmic um, capacity. As a, as a side note, I'm not suggesting in any way that um, orgasm is the ultimate reason for any sexual encounter. In fact, many people have happy and se uh, fulfilling sexual lives without experiencing an orgasm. So, what I am going to do is present some typically reported changes to cross-gender hormones and to um, bottom surgery. Afterward, I will present two, um, two different stories from two different people. As I said earlier, the identifying information will be changed. While you listen to this presentation, um, I would like you to think about what, you know, what, orgasmic, what an orgasmic experience means to you and what it would mean if you experience a, radical, a radically changed orgasmic capacity. Okay. Um, some of the typical changes in orgasmic capacity and experience for trans women can be caused by cross-gender hormones and some can be caused by bottom surgery. Some people do not even experience any changes whatsoever. Um, it is important to note that like with cisgender population, the orgasmic experiences are as just as varied and no one's orgasm, orgasm is the same. Uh, trans women can be, um, orgasm can be affected by the hormones they take and trans women can be prescribed different types of hormones um, and different forms of those hormones which all can impact their orgasmic experience. Um, also different surgical techniques can have different um, outcomes and complications which can also impact orgasmic capacity and experience. The range of changes can be from none to minimal to radically different. For some, even a complete loss of orgasmic capacity. Some do not experience any changes until they have even had bottom surgery, for that matter. Some of the typical effects of cross-gender hormones on orgasmic capacity and experience if pre-surgery include, but are not limited to, reduced strength in erection, uh, change in ejaculation, uh, there's generally a, um, typically, generally there's a reduced quantity of um, ejaculation, nocturnal erections and emissions can be reduced. Uh, and orgasms can change to be more align what um, is considered to be a female experience in that it's, uh, there's more contractions that spread throughout the body and not just centred around the genitals. Also, there can be an increase in time to reach orgasm. Some of the typical changes after surgery include the already mentioned changes as well as with more um, 
more focused upon body sensations and less so on gentle contractions. Uh, and there is, of course, um, no ejaculation, generally. They can last longer, so the period of time for a, an orgasm can be expanded, um, and trans women can experience multiple orgasms. Well, typically there is no ejaculation, as I had said, because the, there is a, in surgery there is a removal of the testes. Um, some people have reported experiencing ejaculation, which is likely to do with the leftover structures that's, um, that the surgery doesn't remove, such as the prostate. Yes, you do actually have to get your prostate checked um, to avoid um, prostate cancer. The chances of it is very much reduced because of the hormones you take, but it's still a possibility. These changes in orgasm have been considered to be, so these changes have been considered to be more aligned with what uh, cisgender women experience. Uh, it is typically understood that if a person is capable of, un of experiencing an orgasm prior to surgery, they will be able to, um, afterwards, barring any complications, they should, in theory, be able to um, orgasm. Uh, and in fact, some surgeons recommend that uh, the person becomes familiar with their orgasm experience prior to surgery in order to um, uh, produce better outcomes after surgery. Complication rates for bottom surgery have been estimated to be 15% and is dependent upon the surgical technique, um, such as if you use um, uh, bowel or intestine uh, segments uh, to increase the vaginal depth, they ad attract uh, higher complication rates. So the 15% actually in excludes these particular techniques. Uh, some complications which can occur as a consequence of surgery um, can include a loss of sensation of the clitoris and or uh, the vulva area due to nerve damage or scarring. Some surgeons and researchers estimate that 20 to 40 percent of trans women who undergo bottom surgery will go on to experience problems with their orgasm capacity and or will actually ex not be able to be orgasmic afterwards where even if they were beforehand. In addition there is some complications which can occur after healing uh, these include a narrowing or, or shortening of the vagina, a narrowing of the entrance of the vagina during arousal. These complications can generally, uh, they can be, make penetrative sex difficult or painful, if not impossible. However, these techniques, uh, these complications can be generally um, fixed with additional surgery, but that attracts more complications than what was there pre previously. Like there is increased rate of uh, scarring. Okay. Now I'm going to take you through two stories. Um, they are real life stories, as I've mentioned before, and name, their names and parts of their story have been changed to protect their identity. First is um, Beck. She is a she is 18 years post surgery. Um, Beck was 28 when she underwent surgery. At 26, she transitioned with the support of family and fr and work. Prior to her transition, Beck had not experienced sex with a partner, nor an orgasm with a partner. Despite feeling uncomfortable and disliking masturbation, Beck occasionally did masturbate pre-transition. She would describe that she was able to reach her, her be able to reach orgasm normally within about five minutes. 
generally a particularly typical um, orgasm, and orgasm response for um, someone that's assigned male. After starting cross-gender hormones, they did not masturbate and refused to have partner sex or even relationships for that matter. Nocturnal emissions and erections had been reduced, which she was really stoked about. <laughs> After a few months post-surgery, Beck tried to masturbate. A few months is generally what you would expect because they uh, got to go through a lot of um, healing. Uh, Beck tried to masturbate. Uh, she was unable to experience an orgasm. She continued to masturbate regularly for about a year after, after surgery, at least once a week. However, she w was not able to reach orgasm and out of frustration and disappointment, she stopped trying. 14 years post-surgery, um, Beck had her first ever sexual encounter. Um, she, where she did not experience an orgasm. She did not um, well, she did notice she was sexually aroused. Just prior to Beck's first sexual encounter, she had started to masturbate again and had been able to re reach orgasm on a rare occasion. But she, when she didn't reach orgasm, she had began, begun to enjoy the experience and developed a non-expectation to um, orgasm. Beck has had uh, other partners since then and as with her first partner she was not able to experience orgasm. A couple of things which occurred for Beck prior to the period where she did not prior to the period where she um, started masturbating again was there was a change in her hormones. Things like her androgen blockers were stopped. They're not necessary anymore because she was, wasn't was producing massive amounts of testosterone again anymore because of not having testes. Um, and her estrogen levels also were adjusted. They were, were reduced a little. After Beck started masturbating again, she discovered that she was able to orgasm with a combination involving um, penetration and clitoral uh, stimulation. Um, Ashley is a rather different case. They are pre-transition, pre-cross-gender hormones and as such are pre-bottom surgery. In fact, they're not even sure how they identify. However, what Ashley does know is that they desire to have female genitalia <clears throat> and experience a female orgasm. They have also felt that their body is not right. They do acknowledge that they have and do experience some pleasure with their current genitals, but in order to be aroused and orgasm, they stimulate themselves in a fashion that's very similar to what a woman would do. Ashley believes that uh, important people in their life would not accept them if they uh, transitioned. As such, they do not want to take cross-gender hormones because the effects will become visible. Uh, consequently, Ashley considers transition to, as an impossibility for them. Um, Ashley has, after well, more recently, um, Ashley has found that uh, through prostate stimulation, they believe they have come close to experiencing female orgasm without cross-gender hormones or surgery. They still want to have um, the surgery. Uh, this, this slide um, just shows you some of the references that, which, are, which is related to um, uh, orgasm experiences post-op. Uh, these references are included in my slides. So if you like this content and would like to see some more 
on motorcycles, art and sex related content, don't forget to sign up to the channel. Um, but for now, I'm signing off. Don't forget to subscribe, like and press the bell to be notified of any updates.